Before I born, I was a laborer. My grandmother, my grandmother, my grandfather, all of them, labor. Everywhere is labor. And I ain't giving up my labor at all. Because you see, this is not a time to tamper with our government. It is not a time to tamper with our government. Development is on the rise. We're number one in everything. Do not take for granted the strides we have made to reach here. Do not give up on your government. This is not the time to tamper with any government. We are number one in the economy, in the OECS. We didn't get there overnight. We had to fight, we had to plow, we had to take some sacrifices. Servants had to wait for this. We had to do a little that. We had to do a little restructuring of our financial situation. We had to reduce our debts. We took the sacrifice, and now we're getting the rewards and the benefits. And so we cannot let that pass. We cannot let that pass. And that is why we're not giving up on our labor. We're not giving up on our labor. We're number one in manufacturing. All those ladies and young men on the industrial side making us number one in the Caribbean. We're small, but we tell our because we are unstoppable and labor is unstoppable. And Mr. Pam. They can't keep us down. How can they keep us down? How can they keep us down? And Mr. Pam Conda, you know, has warned us about this concoction before. One time he said there are natural disasters that can destroy a whole country. He said that a Pam government is worse than a natural disaster. He said that a concoction unity government is worse than a natural disaster. He has warned us because we see how they act even when they're not in power. They want to shut down a radio station for allowing freedom of speech, taking a radio station to court. As much things as people have said about the prime minister, you have never heard him touch a radio station. In fact, he has opened up the airway so that anybody can have a radio station. Anybody can speak to the mind. In the morning, you hear them abusing doggy. In the afternoon, you hear them abusing doggy. And he never yet do anything. The worst dictator ever. But they are showing us that they can be dictators. That they want to close down, as Dr. Drew say, not even dogs don't want to back, but on the labor, dogs will back. Dogs will back on the labor. <laughs> trying to muzzle freedom of speech. Trying to muzzle you when you show your colors. I'm going to tell you a story. There's a young lady who works very closely with the campaign. And she worked in a PAM office with PAM people who asked her if she's going to be su supporting Sam Condor. She told them, she, Sam Condor left labor, not she. And she's going to stay with she labor. Constituency office. After the vacation, the PAM office that she worked in suspended her for two weeks. Two weeks, suspended her for two weeks. That happened just a month ago. Just because she came and she was working hard with me in my constituency office on her vacation, suspended for two weeks. And when she goes back, went back out after the two weeks suspension, the Terminator. The Terminator. And they're not even in office yet. That is not what we're going back to. This country belongs to all of us. It ain't belong to some. It belongs to all of us. St. Paul's people have a right. St. Peter's people have a right. Kayon people have a right. 
village people have a right. Mac people have a right. It belongs to all of us. But they believe that it should only be them. You see the vex. No Sembar's man supposed to be no prime minister. No short black man supposed to be no prime minister. No young, beautiful black young lady supposed to be no big shot lawyer. They ain't supposed to make no money. We supposed to stay down here. You remember they said they want to put you in a wall and show grass in there for you to eat. Don't forget, you know. That is the same people, the same mentality, and they will not stop. Because even outside of power, they want to muzzle people. But they will not muzzle us because we will let freedom reign. And we will support freedom of speech. And that is why we must rally behind Freedom Radio Station and Juni Libor. <coughs> Bully politics, as they say. I'll give you another story that they really intent on bullying and are calling names this time. I call it names this time. One time on a radio program, I said that if it is true that Vance Amory received $1.5 million in an account with him and his wife, that somebody must be accountable. Well, one of his lawyers met me and tell me, I hear you talking about Vance Amory. And I tell him, yes, and I'm going to continue to talk about him. He said, well, I'm going to meet you in court. I said, I'm waiting. I said, I am waiting. Because when we get into court, then all of it could come to light. May I hear from him again. Trying to bully me to not say anything. But I'm saying it again. If it is true that Vance Amory received $1.5 in accounts, company accounts, somebody must be accountable for that. If it is true. So tell him I've said it again. I've said it again. They cannot bully me. My closet is empty. I could open it. May I got nothing to hide. So you will never bully Conris Maynard. Never bully Conris Maynard. And don't let them bully you. Don't let them bully you. Don't let them call your name and rage. You're trying to frighten you. Because you got a boyfriend in another part of the country where you live there. You got family there. If you register there, you vote there. Vote where you are registered. And we will back you up. We will support you. We have your back. So don't let them bully you. Because they can't bully me. Me not got nothing in my closet. He ain't even gonna do it. We not afraid. So they cannot stop us. And they will try everything in their arsenal to try and stop labor. But they can't stop us. And they can't talk the truth. They can't talk the truth. What is the truth? The truth is that Sinkich is number one. So they have to tell a lie that Sinkich is doing bad. The truth is we have reduced our national debt from 200% to under 90%. All of a sudden, I can't hear about national debt. But as the PM say, you know how we feel about that. I ain't say it. <laughs> In the height of crime, they had a lot of things to say. We reduced crime by 100 percentage. So they have to start doing things about that. They have to tell lies in order to fool the good people of this nation. They cannot come to you speaking the truth. But they cannot stop us. They cannot stop labor. And that is why we must stick together. Some of us may not have gotten everything that we hoped for. Some of us, I mean, our government has tried, but we would not be able to touch everybody. But that is why you have to ensure that we have the chance to continue to touch everybody. We must band together because they want to divide us. That is what their plan is. That's why they attacked and went after Mr. Pam Condor. Because they wanted to divide labor. Because they couldn't do it on their own. Douglas was to Talawa. Still to Talawa. So they can't do it on their own. They have never been able to do it on their own. Never. But labor is in charge. 
Labor is large and in charge, and we must stick together. We must love one another. We must band together, hold arms together, and make sure that when election comes, you get everybody out to vote. This is no time to be saying, boy, I ain't get the piece of land yet, because it's going to come. Dr. Jew and Dr. Vance Gilbert, Dr. Nargen and Conris Maynard will keep applying the pressure. We will work on your behalf. And so don't give up. Absolutely. And that is why we're putting in the pressure now. And we have seen the results. And we love that. Because we have experienced people here who are listening to these fresh ideas. Fresh vision. And we are well positioned to continue the leadership of this party going forward. We have youth and we have experience. We have men and we have women. Everything you need, labor got it. Everything you need, labor got it. We got the hard wheel. Hard wheel. And so I am proud to be part of the Springtime crew. And we commit to you to continue the struggle of the elevation of our people from the lowest classes to the highest classes. I ask you again, as I always do, there are people around you who are not registered. Go and get them registered now. Time is drawing nigh. June 2015 is not that far away. Time is drawing nigh. Go and get registered. Tell your neighbor that you are voting labor and must come with you. Because me and my neighbor voting for labor. Show me your voting finger. Raise up your voting finger. Show me your voting finger. Raise up the voting. All right. Me and my neighbor. We are voting our comrades back and we're voting our new comrades in. So I want you to rally behind Labour, rally behind your Prime Minister, rally behind the Springtime crew because we are number one and we love you. I love you all. Party, what you have on the other side is deception, total deception, and you see it over and over again. They said they buy cutting parliament, but they come every three sessions to get their pay. I want to see the PM gain it double or triple if they're gonna take it. I want to know if they're gonna take it. Because the government illegal. So I don't see how they can take it. Else there will be a set of deceiving people and hypocrites. They must not take it. Because the government is illegal. Mark you, they don't come in parliament because the government is illegal. They can't come to honor some teens, 25 remarkable teens. Because the government is illegal. But when CPL... They're over in the government booth, cocking the food, eating and drinking. The government ain't illegal then. Music festival, they're there, cocking the food. The government ain't illegal then. Government organized function. So you can see they're all about self, they're not about you. You vote for them to go to parliament. They say they ain't going. Well, they're collecting the money, but they're going CPL. 
and they're going music festival they're enjoying themselves they're all about self they're not into this thing about serving people so you have to leave them where they be just about self and not about serving but as i said to you tonight we have a string of springtime candidates in the back here you heard one just now they want you to put your hands together again for the king himself who gave you a wonderful presentation and i now want to call on the candidate for constituency number eight number eight where the case is straight so much so that some people don't even know what they're doing and saying when you hear them on the radio the things they say make absolutely no sense oh he want people call him dr jew so he named dr jew <laughs> nobody tell them do not do the medicine if they want to name doctor they got all kind of people named doctor and they do no medicine so you don't understand the doctor do the medicine he named dr jew dr jew but he have a problem even with that because they don't have anything at all to say. Doctor, you got them so busy. You got them on their toes. They don't know where to go and what to do. And so we know that in number eight, the case will be straight. And we call on Doctor Joe to make his presentation to us tonight. Doctor Joe, no matter what they say, Doctor Joe. constituency of constituency number eight the largest constituency in our federation goes all the way from Bayfords and head all the way to Otley's including St. Peter's proper, Connery, Keys, Kayon and all the other communities in between I want to say to St. Paul's tonight, let me touch football a little bit at this moment constituency number eight is the mecca of football so is St. Paul. The only constituency with three premier teams. St. Peter's, Connery, and Kayon. And very soon, we're going to add a fourth one because Keys would not be left behind. And St. Peter's at this point is at the head of the competition. And on Saturday, We'll be paying St. Paul's. Well, the Prime Minister is my leader. And I respect my leader. But on Saturday, humbly, I think St. Peter's is going to take that one. No hard feelings whatsoever. <laughs> and so I want to congratulate them for that. Tonight, I want to touch a little bit on what's happening in our great constituency 
Number eight. And I want you all to know something very clearly about that constituency. That I think that in 2010, CJ left. And I think that the constituency, looking at it now, they are very sorry that Cedric Leibard had to leave, for he was doing a tremendous job. Compare Cedric and what he did to what Hamilton is doing now. There is no comparison whatsoever. Hamilton is sleeping. Sleeping. What you call him? Sleeping what? Sleeping. Sleeping. He's sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. Has not done anything in the constituency. The last time he said that his motto was a man who keeps his promises. Which promise has Hamilton kept? Has not kept one promise. The basic promise of going to the parliament and representing the people, Hamilton has not kept that one. So how can you trust a man who cannot keep his basic promise of going to the parliament? He has a problem with that. The other day I said down in Sandy Point there was a young lady from Upper Monkey Hill. She was one of the remarkable teens. And he was supposed to present her with her plaque or whatever she was supposed to get. And do you think he showed up? Did not show up. Total disrespect to her. Guess what he sent to her? Some letter talking about motion of no confidence. What a young 17-year-old hoping to get some recognition. She's talking about motion of no confidence. Total disrespect. No respect for the young people of this country. And that is why the young people of this country must stick with your labor. You heard it from Marcelo. A large percentage of our population is youth. So if youth represent a large percentage of the population, then the political parties must represent that population. But look at the labor team. Four of us are below 40 years of age. Four of us. That's youth. But when you look at the other side, you hardly could find a youth among them. That is because they want the young people in the party, or the concoction, or whatever they have. They want to exclude young people and then say they have a plan for young people. But I want to say to the young people, look on this stage. You see the springtime crew, a new generation of people coming forward for leadership. But the only party who can provide that. The only political movement that can provide that is the Sankis Nevis Labour Party because we are serious about the youth in this country. Look at what we have done for the youths. Last night, I was doing some canvassing in Lower Monkey Hill and I had the opportunity to speak to a few youths about what we are doing for them. And they were impressed with what Labour is doing for the youth. The youth is with Labour, but we don't just want you to be with Labour. We want you to go and vote for Labour because if you want all of this to continue, you must show up and vote on election day. And so this springtime crew is going to be going around to the youths and letting the youths know you have to come with us. You have to join with us. We understand you. You understand us. Let's join together, form a youth movement throughout this nation and knock the concoction right out of the, right out of the water. We have a program for you. We have brought you the GRASS program. We have brought you the TOPS program. We have brought you the REACH program. So many programs to go and study overseas here in institutions of higher learning. And that you cannot take for a joke. Where else in the Caribbean can youth own land as easily as they can earn it here in St. Kitts and Nevis? Where else in the Caribbean can you earn a home in your 20s and in your 30s other than St. Kitts and Nevis? So there is real progress for the young people and the youth under this labor government. And that is why the youth must stick with your labor. But there are a few things I want to talk about in my Upper Monkey Hill. Because they came up there and they had a meeting up there. And Dr. Timothy Harris was very disrespectful. And in a few moments, I'm going to tell you what he said in Upper Monkey Hill. But I'm happy that the people of Upper Monkey Hill didn't go out to hear him. Thought he had a big crowd up there. Now Tim Hamilton stayed on the stage to hear him. When Dr. Timothy Harris was talking, Hamilton was in a shop drinking a beer. No respect for each other. His leader is speaking and he in a shop drinking a beer. The crowd was so small, they said small ox band could have passed through the crowd. Nobody of Upper Monkey Hill listening to them. And when you hear them, hear them, we had a large crowd of Upper Monkey Hill. One large crowd. There are a lot of cars and each car bring one people and they block up the whole road. And nobody there to listen to them. 
And so in Upper Monkey Hill, I want to tell the people of Upper Monkey Hill who are listening tonight that I grew up in Upper Monkey Hill and I recognize there were some issues in Upper Monkey Hill with land. And the people lived here for many years, generations, and they didn't own the land. And Dr. Drew is lobbying the Minister of Land, who is the Prime Minister, that the people of Upper Monk Hill must be given rights to their land. And guess what? The Prime Minister has agreed. Put your hands together for the people of Upper Monk Hill. I told the Minister of Works, Public Works and Roads, that in Upper Monkey Hill, I want up there to be beautified. And I told him we have to get rid of all these galvanized fences that make the place not too beautiful and beautiful, beautify it. And he has agreed that we are going to beautify Upper Monk Hill. Big things coming for the people of Upper Monk Hill. Put your hands together again for them. I want to touch a little bit tonight on what happened today and transpired today. There's a man going around this country by the name of Dr. Timothy Harris. He's a bully politician. He's a bully politician. His biggest tactic to win any election is by bullying people. Dr. Timothy Harris has bullied Pam. He has bullied CCM. But tell him that we say from St. Paul's, he cannot bully the labor movement. His bullying tactics stop right here. We will not be intimidated. We will not be pushed around. We are 81 years old. Tell Timothy Harris, he and his blue party just passed one year. Stand up, stand up. Stand up for your right. Dr. Timothy Harris today took Freedom Radio to court. For me, it is a bit personal because my sister, Sister Sensia, works at Freedom Radio. It seems like Dr. Timothy Harris thinks that only him and his family should eat. Nobody else in this country should eat. He doesn't say everything, one, two, and three, is for he and his family. But I'm telling Dr. Timothy Harris that this nation have about 50,000 people and everybody deserves to eat. So he took Freedom Radio to task today in court. Or so he thought he would have taken them to, um, to task by saying that some words that were uttered were transmitted by Freedom Radio. Well, Freedom Radio covered a public meeting, and the words that are transmitted are not the words of Freedom Radio. However, they say you can take people to court for that. But Dr. Timothy Harris, who abused more people from the platform than Dr. Timothy Harris. Highly got in Sandy Point was a, a severely abused by Dr. Timothy Harris from the platform. How come nobody take him court for that? From the platform, he abused the Honorable Marcella. Nobody take him court for that. From the platform, he abused, he abused Dr. Vance Gilbert. Nobody took him court for that. From the platform, he called a man Mumu. Nobody took him court for that. From the platform, he suggested Sean was all kind of things except a man. Nobody took him court for that. Dr. Timothy Harris has even bullied Pam. Nobody took him court for that. But when somebody says something, he don't like it. He run court and court. His skin is thin. Dr. Timothy Harris really has to be a coward. He come up to Upper Monkey and I'll tell you some of the things that he said to defend me. He said, I was paid to run. He said it directly. For the first time, he said the words directly, Dr. Drew was paid to run. He said it in Upper Monk Hill, trying to discredit me. And hopefully, he hopes that Sleepy Hammy could get some of the votes. Nobody took Win FM to court for that. And nobody took Dr. Timothy Harris to court for that. He also said, the government paid for me to go and study, and now I come back, I gone into politics. And the government of St. Kitts and Nevis did not pay one dollar for me. Contrary, Dr. Timothy Harris pursued a PhD while he was a minister of government. And nobody said nothing about that. How much more selfish can you be? How much more bullying can you be? And people who dish out, people who can't take. And Dr. Tim Harris is a prime example of that. What you give, you must be able to take. 
be like the samurai. The samurai say, I live by the sword, and I'm also willing to die by the sword. Dr. Timothy Harris live by bullying, and anybody who say anything about him, he gets thin skin and start crying and running in court, but they say something about me. If this whole platform plan to take Dr. Timothy Harris to court, the court will not all cases of us taking him to court, because all of us, he has views. Dr. Timothy Harris, get some skin. Thicken up your skin or stop bullying people. This bully politics cannot work in St. Kitts anymore. In constituency number seven, he's trying to bully the labor people in constituency number seven. Anybody in number seven who does not support him, he doesn't talk to them. Anybody who doesn't support him, he sends his supporters to abuse them. Anybody who doesn't support them, he looks like he wants to get rid of them. What kind of man is that who says he wants to be the leader of a country? Can't be right. Cannot be right. Practicing bully politics. Dr. Vance Gilbert put up his posters. Dr. Timothy Harris said, they say, take them down. They disappear. All the posters were up. Hurricane Harris passed and all the posters came down. And right after the hurricane, all the Harris posters went up. Politics, bullying politics. Family member threatening candidate Gilbert, telling him blood must shed his sake. This is going to be a bloody election. Trying to intimidate Gilbert. But you can't intimidate Gilbert. I know Gilbert. Bully politics. Bully politics. And the type of politics must not survive in St. Kitts. Politics is not about bullying. It is not about bloodshed. It is about constructive argument and who got the best ideas win. That is what the labor movement represents tonight. Stop the bully politics. Because nobody created you. And so, I want to say clearly tonight, please to leave Freedom Radio alone. Matt Brentley launched his campaign on Freedom Radio. John L. Powell speaks on Freedom Radio. Eugene Hamilton goes on Freedom Radio. Even I don't understand what Eugene Hamilton is saying. And nonetheless, let him say what he wants to say. Because we believe in freedom and freedom of speech. And so democracy, I say, must reign in St. Kitts and Nevis. And the bullying politics must be stopped and must be stopped now. And so I want you labor people to stay vigilant. Don't be intimidated. Don't be afraid. I want to speak now to those who are among us who may not have born here. To our Caricom brothers and sisters, I want you to know that the party that you must support is the St. Kitts Nevis Labor Party. This is a party that has stood with you, and you must stand with the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party. Look at what they refer to you as. Dr. Timothy Harris said that you all bang water to come here. Huh? Disrespectful. Just because you have a different view to him, he said you have bang water to come here. Well, that can't be right. And when he was embarrassed by their statement, he said, oh, I'm talking about foreigners, not the CARICOM. He want people now to go after the Chinese. So now he's picking on the Chinese. Anything that is different and don't support him, he wants to get out of the way. And in constituency number eight, I realize that they have a strategy that he's trying to run. We are now, he's trying to divide Pam. He has already destroyed Pam. Our Pam is weak. Pam is dead. Look at their posters of Pam. What have you seen? The hat is gone. The hat is gone. Pam cannot put the hat on the posters because Dr. Timothy Harris tell them, take out the hat off the posters. So as a young man said, they bring in Ploop, and Ploop has destroyed Pam, and Pam's supposed to be 40 something years or more. But how is that? That is not right. So the people who are Pam are telling me, Dr. Drew, I don't understand this unity thing. Man, I say, you don't understand it because of concoction. Nobody can understand a concoction. They're saying that they are yellow, that they are orange, that they are white, that they are blue. They can't make up their mind up to now. If you have a movement and a party that can't make up their mind, how can you elect them to run a country and lead a country? Over in Nevis, Matt Brantley said that he has three seats 
to bring to the table. He wants to know what they're going to bring over here. Because Mark Brantley is saying that if he brings three seed, then he has an argument to be the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. Already arguing for who to be the leader if they were to win the government, but they're not going to win the government. And over here, they're telling Timothy Harris, Timothy Harris, you only got two people running in your proof party. How can you be Prime Minister? That is what they're saying silently. And I want you to pay close attention. That in this Labour Party, we had a convention for the unity concoction. So you can't take them seriously. In this Labour Party, we have a constitution. Do they have a constitution for the concoction? No constitution. Here we have laws and bylaws and a process of doing things. Do they have a process of doing things in the concoction? That is why I'm telling you it is not real. It is a facade. It is something that they have invented. Nobody has signed anything to say this is the way that things must go. And so when Mark Brantley says he has three seats, he's telling them, if I bring three, I would have to be the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. In fighting start already, and they ain't win nothing yet. What is their objective? What is their objective? When you ask them, I went to a home last night, and I was speaking to the people. And we tell them exactly what labor is about. Then they say, you know something? But what about Douglas, man? What about Douglas, man? So they're going around trying to spread this message. Everything is hatred for Douglas. Hatred for Douglas. I say, okay, put that out the way. Tell me what is the plan that unity, concoction, have for St. Kitts and Nevis. They can't name one thing. One thing, so their plan is hatred. Any movement or organization that is built on hatred cannot last. Hatred is a negative emotion that cannot last. It must be destroyed by love and labor love. Cannot survive. So they don't have any plan for you. No plan for St. Kitts and Nevis. All they want to do is to say, let's get rid of Douglas. That is their mantra. And if you compare the PM to Dr. Timothy Harris, there's no comparison. Not even close. Dr. Timothy Harris does not have the temperament, does not have the know-how, does not have the demeanor. He's not a statesman to lead a country. It means if he becomes prime minister, anybody who opposes him cannot eat. You cannot run a democratic country like that. Imagine here over in seven, and an elderly man couldn't have his garden where he was planting a couple of ground provision. That too had to go because he does not support Dr. Timothy Harris. Reggie, who ran against him. What did he do to Reggie? Lock up Reggie. Reggie said, Dr. Drew, they locked me up. A man do the man know who. Politics of bullying. He doesn't have the temperament to be a prime minister. The people, the leaders in the CARICOM who do not support Dr. Timothy Harris, do you know what he call them? Because they do not support his view, you know what he call them? A bunch of jokers. And these are the same people Dr. Timothy Harris want to go sit down next to and calling them jokers. So you mean those who are from Jamaica, Dr. Timothy Harris is saying your prime minister is a joker. If you come from Dominica, your prime minister is a joker. If you come from Guyana, your prime minister is a joker. So how can you support a man in St. Kitts and Nevis when he's calling the leader of your country a joker? The man is not ready for prime time yet. Simple as that. So, Labour people, as I wrap up here tonight, I want you to stay focused. I want to have the people of this country of St. Kitts and Nevis, I want you to think clearly. You have all the signs before the storm. Well, do not let the storm catch you. The man is showing you that he's not ready to be Prime Minister. To be Prime Minister, you have to know how to forgive. The Prime Minister has demonstrated that. People who have run against the Labour Party are working in government. Look at Hailey got the college. Look at Blanchett at the college. As a leader, you have to be forgiven. You cannot want to kill your opposition. That's what dictators do. And he's showing clearly that he's a dictator. Want to shut down a whole radio station and he ain't in power yet. What if he get into power? What if he get into power? You're going to pay tax for your mouth. Uh, you are have to tax for your mouth if that man wants to get in power because you can't talk. I can imagine Dr. Timothy Harris setting up people to go around to find who speak against him because he's acting like that. 
took Ju um, Juni Leiber to court, disrespectful, out of order, against freedom of speech, against democracy. And you're having all the signs. That is why a campaign is important. That is why the Prime Minister ain't in a rush to call an election. Because the longer he waited, the more you all got to see who Dr. Timothy Harris is. Who, who the concoction is. Who Eugene Hamilton is. Who Lindsey Grant is. You all got a good example what these people would represent if they were to be elected. The longer you go on, the more they are exposed. And that is why they want to hurry up the thing. Because they want to fool off for you. They're trying to hurry up the thing. We ain't in a hurry. We ain't in a hurry. The race is not for the swift. The wave is for those who can endure it. What hurry they want down the road, change the government. And that is why you say, let them wait. In the United States, the presidential campaign is about four to five years long. Because you want to expose all the person so you could know who you're electing as the leader of your country. You want to know who is the metal. You want to know what they're made of. And as time goes on, you get to see exactly who they are. I love this country dearly. And that is why I came back here to be a part of these elections. Because as part of these elections, I want our country to continue on a stable path. I don't want it to be taken over by people who just want to take it for power's sake. I want it to be taken by people who want to see the people move upwards and onwards. And that is why you must elect the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party as the next government. And so, Labour people, and the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, and the young people, this is the movement, this is the party that would represent you. This is the party that would take you way into the future. This is the party that has the best leader. This is the party that have youth and experience. This is the party that have people with ideas. This is the party that has transformed St. Kitts and Nevis. This is the party who take men from St. Paul and make them prime minister. So you must stick with the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party. So in this country, I want you to understand that it does not matter where you come from. It does not matter where you come from. If you come from St. Paul's, you can be Prime Minister. If you come from Upper Monkey Hill, you can become a candidate in the St. Kitts Davis Labour Party as long as you have the metal to do it. We don't watch where you come from or how much money you got. We watch who you are and the metal you are made of and the talent you have and what you can contribute to your people. And that is why you must stick with the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party because we are progressive. And so, I want you to do something for me. That elections are dry nigh. And the time for joking is done. The time for hard work is now. So you want you to be on the road. Knock on doors, register people, talk about labor because the ideas are with you. And so when you get up in the morning and you turn in your bed and you see your partner next to you, what you gonna tell them? And if you don't have a partner, even if you have a pillow, what you gonna tell your pillow? As a reminder for you. And when you hit the road and you meet the people on the road, after saying good morning, you're gonna tell them what? And when you get to work and you have a pound bus, who always pushing up your mouth because you know your labor. And he asks you, how are you working? Where are you going to say, I'm laboring well. And when you go to lunch and he asks you, how is your lunch? You say, I'm enjoying the fruits of my good labor. Thank you. Good night. God bless you, St. Paul's. What a presentation. That's Dr. Dynamic Joe. Put your hands together for Dr. Joe. And it's Dr. Joe, your name. <laughs> I thought I saw Chappy somewhere in, his, in the crowd. Chappy? Chappy, who visited us? All right. Chappy, where are you? 
Take our greetings back with you to St. Croix. We want to extend our condolences to you. I know you came at a very tough time at the passing of your brother. And the story to do with Reggie and Timothy Harris, I want to tell you this, that Reggie said he went against him. And Reggie said, made some remark about him, same thin skin thing. I can't even remember what remark he was, but he makes a remark. And I thought that it was a nice thing to say, really. But, you know, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Because it comes with the job. But in any event, Tim was insisting that he carry in Reggie to court. And I went to him. I went to him and I begged him. Give Reggie a chance. Reggie came to me. Reggie said he wouldn't even apologize to him. So I said, Reggie is prepared to apologize to you. Give the man a chance. And he was like, no, no. Came over there. And he took Reggie to court. Reggie was put on remand in prison. So when Tim left the well, not left, but he was thrown out of the Labour Party. And we went over to number seven to have a town hall over there in Malinu School. Reggie is there in he. Let the truth be told. Kinda, <laughs> you know, Tim, they come out with the shots, let the truth be told. Now that all the truths are being told, I don't see the shots no more. But let the truth be told. So Reggie right in there in the number seven thing. So I said, but Reggie, this is the same Tim who sent you to jail. Well, I was begging him for you. You say he was going to apologize. This is the same Tim who sent you to jail. Well, I reach outside the, out inside the manager's school. Reggie, come to me here. Miss Leibard, um, I didn't go to jail, you know. I was on remand. I say, where well, was on remand? In your house? Because I want to know if he was in remand in his house. Because he's in jail, he was when he said him. But that is the kind of person you're talking about. Even though Reggie was saying he was prepared to apologize to him, he still mean he wants to send Reggie to jail. And more than that, you know, this man stand up in parliament. Man, now if the prime minister remember, stand up in parliament. And for about half an hour, he was taking out the text on Reggie. Taking out the text on Reggie in Parliament. That is the nature of the man you're dealing with. Can't help. Can't help. We don't want people like that to run this country. You must be able to be forgiven. You must be able to be forgiven. And that is why you have to ensure that you vote for labor. Because only on the labor, whether you're Pam, Wham, whatever, whatever, you will be able to get house, job, what have you. Somebody was saying to me the other day, they see the amount of people who are against the government coming out of these houses that the government built. Only on the labor. Because if the former government was there, they wouldn't even get in the house. But we in labor say we put need above politics. So when I hear them talking about tribalism, I have to laugh. Because I don't know where the tribalism is. It's probably in their mind. Because we honored Consumitrum on the labor. Douglas himself and at Simmons got a lot of criticism for it from labor people, but he did the right thing. He did the right thing. But Bratcher, they sought to erase Bratcher's memory from the history books. And not only that, they were in power for 15 years. And I continue to say, not even an alley, the name after Bratcher. Not even an alley with all that Bratcher did for this country and for the 
ordinary people in this country, not even an alley, they there for 15 years. They say, they want to hear nothing about Bratton. So if you want to maintain a country where everybody, regardless of their politics, that is what democracy is all about. Have a fair chance, you got to vote for Labour. That is why you have to tell the Pam people them and them other people, vote for Labour. Because lay on the Labour, you have the best chance regardless of who you back, who you are, because need knows no politics. And so I want us once more to put our hands for Dr. Terence Jew, the man in number eight who will defeat Hamilton whenever the elections are called. And we're going to move on to another constituency that is currently held by Pam, but which next election that gone into. And that is number five. Next election that gone in, we had a wonderful meeting in Sandy Point on Tuesday night. And we were able to show that the candidate there is an absolute waste. He has brought nothing to Sandy Point for 10 years. So he's the leader of Pam, but Pam is extinct under him. What is Pam? They lose the hat and all. And he's the leader. They went from yellow to orange to blue to white. Mean they surrender now. They reach white. They've lost their identity under him. Allow Timothy them one year old. Pam 50 years old. 50. And they allow Timothy them one year old. Any ain't got a party. As I said, they start one year ago. Nobody joined them. Tell me anybody you know join them. Nobody join them. They start off with a chairman. They said the chairman is Douglas Watley. They ain't got a chairman no more. They ain't got a chairman no more. Because Douglas Watley think he could have go out there on the radio and say that Timothy wrong to say. Sylvester Anthony, bang water and come here. Douglas Watley went on the way and said that, you know, well, who tell he say that? All of a sudden, you hear nothing about no chairman again. Tim, just deal with him because you can't say nothing about him. Can't say nothing about him. When Reggie says something about him, make sure Reggie go to jail. If something come on and freedom, carry them to court. Well, how Douglas Watley think he could say something about him? I remain the chairman. You just hear nothing else about the chairman. That just disappear. So I want to bring to the microphone the candidate for constituency number five, Dr. Nargen Wilson, who when the next elections are called, will ensure that Sean Richards will say goodbye to him. Dr. Nargen Wilson. Never, ever wake a sleeping tiger. Well, 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 well. What can trouble in the place? Some people around here want me go out on a Comrades of constituency number six, good night. I bring you special greetings from down in number five. I want to say to you tonight here in constituency number six that on the Pam, you have had a very hard and harsh history. And I don't want you ever to forget it. You have a good man down here in number six. A good man in Dr. Denzel Douglas, the best prime minister in the world. They never thought it would have happened. They never thought 
that we could have such a wonderful prime minister coming out of constituency number six, coming out of St. Paul's. But Dr. Denzel Douglas has proved them wrong. Dr. Denzel Douglas has taken this constituency and this country to number one in many things. Who would have imagined that St. Kitts and Nevis would have grown to be number one in cruise ship arrivals here, here in this region? Who would have imagined that St. Kitts and Nevis would have been number one in, in manufactured goods exported to the United States right here in this region? Who would have imagined that St. Kitts and Nevis would have been number one in foreign direct investment? But I want you to look around, look around you, and you will see something very important. Who would have imagined that right here in St. Paul's, you would have seen developments such as the Kittishan Hill? Who would have imagined Dr. Denzel Douglas has brought even significant de development in tourism right here in constituency number six? In recent times, you would have seen a groundbreaking ceremony for yet another significant development right here in constituency number six, the Hilden Hotel. Who would have imagined? And so what your prime minister, our prime minister, has achieved and is aiming to do is spread the development all around the federation. He's making sure that everybody gets some of the pie. The prime minister has been working well for you, the people of constituency number six, and well for all of the people of this federation. Comrades, constituency number six, you must understand that the prime minister is a very good man. He is a kind man, and I say this because on the PAM, when St. Paul's and the rest of constituency number six would not receive even a road or a new road to be a road to be resurfaced, the Prime Minister argued and argued in the parliament for it. School meals passed over constituency number six like nothing. It was as if these people were trying to isolate or take constituency number six off of St. Kitts. The Prime Minister, now today, he has not given the same treatment to even in the areas or to the persons who were severely victimizing the people of constituency number six. I am so happy that Dr. Denzel Douglas is the Prime Minister. I am so happy that is a movement like the labor movement with principles, philosophies, and ideas which has taken us to the highest high. Because I want to say to you, in Sandy Point, on the labor, we have managed to receive a state-of-the-art facility in the Pox Hospital, the Pox Medical Center, which is serving the people of Sandy Point and the surrounding communities. For many years on the PAM, they promised all kind of wings. They promised pediatric wing. They promised psychiatric wing. They promised KFC Grand Kentucky wing. All kind of wings. But we never get nothing. It took a visionary true leader like Dr. Denzel Douglas to bring forth a state-of-the-art facility, first of its kind in the region. Comrades, be reminded that under the administration of PAM, this constituency had not seen, not even one low-income house. Not even one. Today, when you look around your constituency, under the leadership of Dr. Denzel Douglas, you have seen many housing projects in this constituency. You name it, whether it is Saddlers or Deep Bay or Parsons or right here in St. Paul's or Newton Ground, you have seen a significant amount of low income or affordable homes. And I say this again to say, in Sandy Point, where the former administration built the chicken wire homes and people feel like they really had something, it took a labor administration that after a severe hurricane had hit us, 
and destroyed the vast majority of those chicken wire homes, this government, this Labour administration, this Prime Minister who comes from a constituency where he was severely victimized and the people were severely victimized, this Prime Minister said, we have to fix back the homes of those people. And it was done. This government good. good. Comrades, this Prime Minister is a caring Prime Minister. Right now, in, down in Sandy Point and Fig Tree, we see a significant number of housing projects. The Prime Minister did not say, don't give them none. The Prime Minister has said, just like how every other constituency is benefiting, so too must constituency number five. And that is why we have such a good leader. A man with a real heart, a heart of flesh. Not a man with a heart of stone like Timothy who only care about himself. We have a good Prime Minister and we must continue to support our Prime Minister, Dr. Denzel Douglas. You heard the Prime Minister who have said over and over again that here in his constituency, when a school meals program came up under the farmer administration, this constituency was left out as if you don't have children coming out of this constituency either. And now today that the program has really expanded, Prime Minister did not say, leave out them dear. The Prime Minister says, every mouth shall be fed. Everyone, every child who does not have the opportunity to get his lunch from his parents or go home and get his lunch shall be entitled to school meals. And the Prime Minister has made sure of that. Put your hands together for your good Prime Minister. Down in constituency number five. When everyone was getting the nice, fancy, big community centers, the Prime Minister said, Sandy Point 2 must have a community center. And it was built. And it was built as good as all of the rest. And so we were never left out. I am so happy that we are now number one in cruise ship passenger arrivals because I have seen a great opportunity an opportunity for the constituency of number five to benefit from the significant number of tourists arriving to our shores. I have a master plan that would transform that constituency. I call it Destination Sandy Point, and I believe the same can be replicated in any, con any other constituency. We must decentralize what is the product of the tourism. And that is what the Prime Minister has been doing when you see Kittishan Hill there and you see Hilden developing there. That is what the White Gate project is about. And so in Sandy Point and Fig Tree, it is my intention to make sure that we benefit significantly by developing a boulevard in Sandy Point that would be attractive to tourists, developing a black sand strip down in the Pompey Fig Tree area, making sure that we have good and proper sporting facilities in Sandy Point and also encouraging our farmers to continue the good work that they have been doing such that they can not only feed that constituency, but feed our nation. That is what labor is about. That is what all the candidates that you see on this platform is about. We are with a party that has a vision. We are a party of principle. We are a party which have had great leaders in the past and will continue to have good leaders in the future. Put your hands together for your good labor government. Comrades, I am so happy. When I look around, even here in St. Paul's, and I see persons who would have gone to school with me. In secondary school, I can remember my first days when I thought, but these, this group of persons, they were really speaking a little strange. They had a different dialect. And I understood that these persons came from the Republic of St. Paul's. And that is why the language, the language sounded 
or, or sounded a little bit strange. And so, the important thing though, is that all of these persons who surrounded me in my classroom down at the Charles E. Middle Secondary School, these persons too graduated, have gone off to university, and they are now back home to serve their community and their country. This has happened because of a good Labour government. This government good. good. This government nice. Good government. Comrades, I can remember the days when many of us sat in our classrooms. And when you would have asked a student next to you, what are you going to do after high school? There was some uncertainty. No one really knew whether they would even get a job or if they would be able to go off and study or if their parents can afford it. But thanks to this good labor government, today, hundreds of student, students, no matter where you came from, has had the opportunity to go overseas and pursue the careers which they so desired. It is because of this good labor government. And so I want to say to you, you might hear a few persons from your communities who are walking around like they're wexed with the government because they probably went off to study and they come back and they believe they have the biggest ideas. Nothing is wrong with having good ideas. Nothing is wrong. But we have procedures. We have protocols. You can't come and just impose and feel like, well, I saw you supposed to go and then you want to get wexed with doggy. Inside so you go. And so you will see a few detractors in your communities who want to even challenge the Prime Minister, and it has happened even here in constituency number six. And when you see them people and you listen to them, you want to shut them down quick, fast, and in a hurry. Let them know that this Prime Minister has brought us to where we are. And we will continue to follow this Prime Minister because he has only done good for the people of this constituency and good for the people of this country. And that is why we will continue to follow our leader. Comrades, your Prime Minister, sometimes when I look at him, I say this man must be Superman. One day, to show you how hard the Prime Minister works, I went to have a meeting with him at his office. And I sat there for about two hours. I know many of you can relate. But in those two hours, he was not wasting time. He was doing the good work for the people of this country. And when he was finished, he said to me, I have a meeting, a meeting in St. Paul's. And he came down to this part of the country. And he passed St. Paul's and he went to Deep Bay. He had a meeting in Deep Bay. And when he was finished, he said, follow me. He went to a second meeting in Deep Bay. And when he was finished, he said, Wilson, follow me. And up to now, Wilson still follow him, eh? Wilson, follow me. He have a meeting in St. Paul's. And I got to St. Paul's. We got here midnight. But the Prime Minister had been meeting with people since very early that morning. You know, he starts his mornings very early. Because when I send him a message, he usually responds about 4 a.m. So he starts his mornings very early. He's a very hard-working man. And when I got here to St. Paul's, I looked at the Prime Minister and I felt so sorry for the man. I said, PM, we will talk tomorrow. Have a good night. Because I understood that the Prime Minister is a hard-working man. And what he's doing, he's doing for the people. And so sometimes some of you may get upset and you may say, I can't get to see the Prime Minister. Maybe you can't get to see him, but he's constantly working on your behalf. So sometimes you won't be able to see the man. He has opened himself, though, to his radio programs. A prime minister that never done work yet. You go up government headquarters all 10 o'clock in the night, he's still out there seeing people. Because of his deep interest and concern for this country. And it is because of the hard work of Dr. Denzel Douglas why St. Kitts and Nevis could boast today as being number one. They can't keep a good man down. Comrades, 
I want to encourage you. And I continue to warn you severely. It was not a nice pass. Remember the day when you, the ordinary man, your grandparents would say to you, you did not even have a stake in the land. You worked hard on the estates. You planted and the first two rows used to belong to the manager. You had a group of persons who called themselves the plantocracy, who were the, own, the owners of every single square foot of land in this country. And it was labor, a labor movement which said, can't be right. We don't mind that you have, but we must have some too. And that is what this movement, the St. Kitts and Nevis Labor Party, is carrying on. And I want to warn you, because if you flirt with the unity concoction, or PAM, or PLUP, or whatever they want to call themselves, if you flirt with them, and we slip back into those days, I warn you, it's not going to be nice. It's not going to be nice. We're going to go back into the wilderness. And so don't make no joke with them. Don't let them discourage you from going out there to vote. Go out and cast your vote. You are the soldiers of labor. And when the prime minister say, let us move, we will move. Because he's the general. He's the general. He's the boss. And we must do it such that we can continue the good progress which we have been having in this nation. Do not allow them to deter you. Don't let them come and tell you no stupidness about, I don't want to vote, nobody vote. Go out and cast your vote. Go out and cast it. I'm not telling you now, if you're a woman in Sunny Point, come there too. Live with her. Vote there. Move in and live with her and vote there. Yeah? And the woman, if you got a man, move in and live with him and vote there. Vote where you live. Vote where you live. That is the way it's supposed to be. Yeah? You are the soldiers, and we have to guarantee a win for labor in all eight constituencies right here in St. Kitts. We must guarantee that win. This is where the real revolution of labor brews here in constituency number six. You must be the soldiers for labor. Dougie used to say something last election, you know. I don't know, I don't hear him say it much. He used to say, talk first. He used to say, talk hard. He used to say, talk last. And when you're done, talk again. I don't know what happened to all you. If all of a sudden, some of the labor people gone silent. What happened? The country running too good, so you're not going to talk nothing. When the country running good, the opposition are bash it. Well, labor people must big up the country. We must big it up. The prime minister talk first, talk hard, talk last, and talk again. Don't let them chat no stupidness. Don't let them take over the airwaves. We must defend this. You know something? Can you believe you have an opposition that is out there? And this opposition is saying to this country and to the rest of the world, hey, the citizens by investment program is a bad thing. That is what they're saying to the rest of the world. Come up with all kind of lies. But do you know who are the lawyers working behind the scenes? All of them over there in the opposition collecting millions. Some of them even go off and have offices all in Dubai. And then they come in here and trying to convince you, the ordinary people, that it is a bad thing. They usually go around and tell people, don't do this, don't take that. As Kevin said the other night, in Sandy Point, Timothy telling people they mustn't take the LED bulb them. And they must bring them by him and he keep all himself. Them kind of haggish behavior. That's the kind of things that tricky. They try to fool you every single time. They are very tricky people. Don't listen to them. Have confidence in your labor government. Have confidence in your candidates. Have confidence in your prime minister, for he is the best prime minister this region has ever seen and will be the best prime minister that this world will ever see. Thank you very much. Have a good night.
Let's put your hands together again for Dr. Norgen Wilson, who was telling us why we must stick with labor, because leadership is important, and we have the best. We have the best. Don't let anybody fool you. We have the best anywhere you go in the world. Anywhere you go in the world. St. Kitts and Nevis is now being mentioned. They don't know us because we even beat in the U.S. in sports sometimes. We beat them the other day in the world games. So everywhere you go, they know about St. Kitts and Nevis because of the leadership of Dr. Denzel Douglas, praised by President Clinton. Sent by the Commonwealth, sent for by the Commonwealth to tell all the other countries how to reduce the debt. Leadership at its best. And politics is about leadership. So we have the best leader and we have the best team. So you go out there and be proud. Proud to be labor. Proud to be labor. And let us continue to have pride in our country as petitions and divisions, citizens and residents, because we are number one. Let me see the finger. Number one. Number one. Number one. And so we got a call to the microphone. The candidate for number seven. Come like he walked something on the other man today. They said when he coming out the court, he stumbled. So I don't know if Vance was one of them in the square. And so he stumbled. And so I want to call on Vance because on election day, he ain't only going to stumble, he's going to fall. Okay. So we're calling on Vance. Vance, come to the microphone. Make some noise, Labour Massive. St. Paul's, make some noise. Let them hear you in Newton Ground. Make some noise. Let them hear you in TFP. Make some noise. Let them hear you across the waters. Make some noise, Labour Massive. Labour sweet. And Labour is good. And all the time. I say Labour is good. And all the time. Comrades, I bring you greetings from the people's constituency of number seven. All the way from Bellevue, going right up to Atlas. We are happy to be here tonight with you in St. Paul's. We are your neighbors. We have been your comrades in the dark days. When Pam was in power, when you suffered, we suffered. We suffer the same pain, so we share something in common. And that is why in this fight, I am, going to go, I am going to call on you to stand with us in number seven. You must stand with us in number seven so we can win this fight together. Comrades, this morning when I woke up, a lady called me. And she said she had a dream last night. And she remembered in, in her dream that there was a field. She was walking through this field. And as she walked through the field, the grass started to grow. And the weeds started to grow. And pretty soon she was confused. She couldn't see where she was going. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, a mist rose up. 
and a lightning crack and a thunder roll. Rain start to fall. Wind start to blow. She said a hurricane came. And all of a sudden, when everything was done, there was nice green pastures. She said to me, Dr. Gilbert, I interpret my dream that in number seven, a change is coming in number seven. She said, Dr. Gilbert, a change is coming in number seven. And a change is coming in number seven. Because some of them don't know who they be. Some of them don't know who they are. We know who we be. But some of them don't know what it be. If they lie, they lie. If they bad, they bad. If they thief, they thief. If they're a flip flop, they're a flip flop. But they confuse, they don't know what it be. But we know who we are. We are labor. Without a shadow of a doubt, we are labor. I was in Mullin, you canvassing yesterday. The rest man said, you know the difference between Pam, Pam supporters. They are, they are politicians up here. But he said, labor ain't got politics up here. He said, labor is in the heart. Labor is in here in the chest. Very deep in the heart, we know who we are. And that is why today I was so proud when the cry around town was, let freedom reign. Let freedom reign. Let me hear you. Let freedom reign. Let freedom reign. And the cry was so powerful. They said they almost bust the belly. You know Humpty Dumpty? <laughs> they say when he come outside and he see Ingrid, he chip over his foot and he almost fall. I wish he had fall. Out of place, trying to stifle the freedom of people of St. Kitts and Nevis. A man who don't love his country. A man who don't love his people. They say he jumped on a plane and went to Anguilla. A man just called me from Anguilla tonight. A good comrade from Mullin, you called me from Anguilla tonight. And he said, boy, Gilly, they don't they are laminate are you. They say all kind of things about are you. They're trying to pull down beautiful St. Kitts and Nevis. These are the men who want to run this country. And all they could do is say bad about this country. We're how they going to run this country. Need God, tell him he's in a man. From you, no sink is bad. They say, Shimati down there saying all kind of things. I mean, Timothy. All kind of things he down there saying. Where's Cedric? Little Cedric, not the big Cedric. Little Cedric gave me a story the other day. He said he was up the hospital and they went for. What's his name? Pam Kanda? Pam Kanda come down the corridor and shaking everybody's hand. And when he see little Cedric, see him there, call Cedric an idiot. Imagine that. The young man can't even vote. And Sam Kanda in the hospital call the young man an idiot. Well, he's the wrong idiot he mess with. Because the amount of what he get, all up on the wall he get what. Cedric Lama 90 tail. Out of place and out of order. Wrong young man he mess with, calling the young man an idiot. And that is how they are. They have no respect for the people. No respect for you. No respect for the common and ordinary man. All they want is power and power at any cost. I heard Dr. Drew talk about it today. This man going around bullying everybody. But I don't tell them, not me, not Vance Gilbert. A tab of me from, me know them, me know where they come from, up the alley, when I'm a skip, skip, skip to my low, when they had latrine outside. I know where they come from. What are they behaving so? And this boy, a little fat boy, 
One day he won't test me. Eh? Coming up in my face. Oh, he pulling hammer after me. Won't tell me that blood gun shed in same case. Well, I tell him, he ain't gonna shed on one side alone. Because we ain't backing down from nobody. We ain't backing down from nobody. It's labor we be, and we stronger than them. We ain't backing down from nobody. With his forwardness, about to put in hammer in my face. I turned my face because I was sore. But I said, this is my nice side of my face. So I turned my face and I said, put it right here. Put it right on this side. I don't want to mess up this side. Put it right here. He started to shake. Hands started to shake. Hammer dropped down. I thought they said he bad. But tell them. I will not be intimidated by anyone. I am not afraid. I am not, not afraid. afraid. Tell Shimati so. But that is why, that is why, comrades, the good people of constituency number seven have the opportunity in their hands to once again feel proud. To welcome the change that is coming in constituency number seven. Because you see, when they first start out, they had a big crowd. But time has been good. The confusion has been cleared from people's mind. And so the young people are coming to Dr. Gilbert. The old people are coming to Dr. Gilbert. The women are coming to Dr. Gilbert. The businessmen are coming to Dr. Gilbert. Even the small little children, they must say, Dr. Vance Gilbert, when I pass in. They say he had a, a lock on constituency number seven. But he now realized me I don't knock it off long time. Long time I lock off the knock. Lock off, knock off the lock. How we go? Long time. Eh? Because number seven belongs to labor. And so the people of number seven, your days of victimization under Dr. Timothy Harris. You don't have to worry anymore. I want to tell you, have no fear. A real man is here. Have no fear. Dr. Gilbert is here. Dr. Gilbert is here for you. I want the people. Last night a man tell me. A man tell me he was talking to some Pam people. And he said, but me, I understand these people. These people telling me that they would never vote for Labour. They're saying they would never vote for Labour, but they want Labour people to vote for Pam. They want Labour people to vote for Pam. But how that going to work? How that is going to work? If they could never vote for Labour, well, Labour could never vote for Pam. Never! And Timothy Harris is a Pam. He's nothing else. He's a Pam. He's the leader of Pam. Timothy Harris. Tell him, give me a last suit, last suit in style. The PM gonna defend me. I want the people of number seven to know that the days of unfair treatment are over. The days of all the victimization are over. The days of bullying in number seven are over. The days of fooling the people are over. The days of giving you crumbs from the table are over. Number seven, listen to my voice. Have no fear. Dr. Gilbert is here to stand by you and will stand for you. And time has been good for us. Time has been good for us. I know this campaign has been long.
But we are coming down to the end. And it's time to get serious. It's time for all the soldiers to fall in line and get serious. Put on your battle boots. Put on your battle gear. It's time for them. We're going to deal with them. The time has come to get serious. Show me your voting finger. Raise up your voting finger. Show Your representative for the hard work he has done in transforming the landscape of constituency number six. Things happen here that you can't believe go happen in St. Paul's and in these areas. Look at Kittishan Hill and all these things that you have. A man that was serious and working hard for the people of constituency number six. Let us go to number seven for a little bit. What will Timothy Harris' legacy be? Can you think of something that Timothy Harris has done in number seven? What will his legacy be? Instead of thinking and looking for a vision and creating something in number seven we could talk about for years to come, he was trying to undermine the prime minister. Wasted his years and his energy undermining the prime minister. And time has been good, comrades. Because the young people are telling me they cannot vote back Timothy Harris in India. Because they're fed up of he just making him making them dependent on him. You see what he used to do? Go around and pay a light bill here and, pay, and, and push a five dollars here. Them kind of nonsense there. And five years after, the people are the same place where they were five years before. But the people are saying they're fed up of that. They're ready to move forward. And so they want a man with vision. And I have presented my vision to the people of constituency number seven. We are going to transform the place. You see, they call Doggy transform number six. We're going to transform number seven. I tell them number seven is in the middle between Tongue and Sandy Point. Number seven must develop into a commercial area that will serve all of the people in this place. Number seven must develop and people must have opportunity. That ain't just talk. Let me see real thing. Real thing for the people. Real vision for the people. And this government will work hard to ensure that this becomes a reality. Comrades, time has been good to us. And I thank the Prime Minister for the vision that he has. And I know that sometimes he have those long days that Nigel talk about. And sometimes he might get a little bit tired. But I want the Prime Minister to know, like Aaron held up Moses' hands, so too shall we hold up his hands. We on this platform and all the people of labor will hold up his hand, for he is the best, the only one to lead us forward. Even them who ain't like him have to admit, but he's the best Prime Minister for truth. If them were like him, they got to admit it. And that is why we know that we will continue forward safely and securely with vision to carry us to the next level more and more, higher and higher, stronger and stronger, forward, ever forward with labor. Thank you, comrades. Thank you. God bless you and good night.
you. But me love saying it's bad. Me love saying it's bad. And I want to tell you that the dung in Anguilla better than St. Kitts. But we love St. Kitts bad. And the joke is, while they're down there, making them think that things are bad here, Anguillans won't come here. Because they feel that we're doing better than them. So may I understand that. They go and St. Vincent, give national flag to people, St. Kitts flag to Vincent Chance to protest the country. And while they're doing that, Vincent Chance want to come here. They want to know, how are you doing it? So the whole thing really is a joke. But I want to tell you about this constituency. About a year ago, Unity said a launch. They had the candidate for number six. So they read a letter. They say, the candidate can't come. So we read a letter from the candidate. They read some bogus letter. Up to now, they can't find the candidate. They wonder who wrote the letter. Who wrote the letter they read in Greenland's back? Say, come from the candidate for number six. But they can't find the candidate yet. That is how big and bad the prime minister is. They can't even find no candidate in number six to run against the prime minister. Prime minister, you don't win. You ain't got nobody running against you. You don't win. And they can't find nobody to run against the prime minister. But I had a whole letter reading in Greenland's back. Say, that's the candidate. Couldn't come the light. Can't find the candidate yet. Part of the deception. No respect at all for this country. But we love St. Kitts and Nevis. One of the things they said about the Prime Minister, one of his biggest sins, according to them, is that he did too long. He did too long. He did 18 years, he did too long. That is one of his biggest sins. But what is too long when you're doing good? When you got your nice little boyfriend and all you're there for a long time, you say, let me done with him because we're there too long. He say, go. Or you got your little girlfriend and you got your nice little love affair. And you're going on. And you say, well, let me done with him because we're there too long. Well, the prime minister has a love affair with this constituency and with the country. And we love him back. So how long is too long if you're doing a good job, if you're doing it right for the people? How long is too long? Not only that, if you are supposed to take an operation, a surgery, and you have a choice between a doctor who performs one surgery or two and one who performs about 40 surgery, which one are you going to? Which one are you going to? And why are you going to the one? Because he has the experience. Well, if this is so about you, what about all your children and all your family members? You want to gamble with their future to bring on this? No way. So let's stick with the prime minister because he's there for a long time. But guess what? He's visionary. He's innovative. And you could see that. That is what they really vexed with him for, his innovation. Every time the thing that got him cornered, he find a way to come out. No confidence, no confidence motion or not. Every time they got him cornered, he find a way to come out. And they talking about the prime minister there too long. Timothy Harris saying there too long. Sam Kande in there too long. With Sam and the Prime Minister there at the same time. He in there too long. Van Sam in there too long. The only person who there long is Douglas. And Douglas doing better than all three of them wrap up together. All three of them wrap up together. So it makes no sense to me. Simmons. Kennedy Simmons had four terms. And he was running for a fifth term. And the same people who say Douglas there too long never think he was there too long. So don't let them fool you. Four times Simmons run. And he was running for a fifth when he was beaten. And nobody think he shouldn't go back. But now the same people who are supporting that now find that Douglas there too long. Don't let them fool you. Douglas is a good leader. 
When we were going through this crisis, this economic crisis, the Prime Minister came to the country and he told you that we all had to make some sacrifices. We all had to make some sacrifices if we needed to bring this country back to economic health. We have to make some sacrifice. We have to tighten the belt. We have to get a little vat. We have to pay a little more for electricity. We have to do all kinds of things. Tighten the belt. But if there's one thing he said was, as soon as the country came back to economic growth, he will make sure that he is you. And he is a man of his word. And I want to thank you for cooperating with us and for having the confidence in us and in the strategies that we use to bring this country back to economic health. And today, he has brought us back to number one. Number one. And he has kept his word, for you heard him this week telling you all of the things that's on that family shopping list. On the family shopping list. All the things on the family shopping list. Canola oil, legumes, olive oil, turkey, pork, oxtail, sausage, chicken, mutton, pigtail, ears, vegetable oil, margarine, shortening, tomato ketchup, tuna, and the list goes on and on. And then you have the health and hygiene section. Health and hygiene, detergent, bleach, disinfectant, sanitary napkins, bathroom, toilet paper, mouthwash, toothpaste, insecticide, and the list goes on and on. And then you have the children's section, baby pampers, baby food, and the list goes on and on. He has kept his word. As soon as the country is back to economic health, and we had our first growth rate in 2013, you have been relieved because this is a good leader and a good government who will make sure that once things get right, you benefit from it. And I was just told, as I was saying, we hope that the business people will reflect the prices, the drop in VAT and export duty in their goods. We hope they will reflect it. But I was just told that they have agreed that as of Monday, those prices will be dropped. So we hope that they will keep their word. And as of Monday, those prices will be dropped. This is a good government. And that is why you have to go out and vote for labor. Okay. Lake say it's tomorrow. His business place, you're getting it tomorrow. That's Kawaja. So you can go Kawaja tomorrow and you get your reduced prices tomorrow at Kawaja. So I want to thank you. Thank you for working with us. Thank you for having confidence in us. Thank you for having confidence in our strategies. And you see that we have not let you down. Because the strategies have worked to the point where we are now number one. And everywhere I go, people want to know how you do it. How you do it. How you do it. They want to take out Douglas' brain as if they could put it in their own head. And so tonight, tonight, I am proud to stand here and call upon our leader. Our leader to address us, the right honorable Dr. Denzel Llewellyn Douglas. Make some noise. Make some noise.
first you know, the prime minister don't want me to introduce him, but I forgive him. So I have a young lady from his constituency, Joselle, who will do those honors. Put your hands together for the best prime minister in the world. As I said before, my name is Joselle. I am registered to vote for the first time in 2015. I was born into the good government of St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party, led by the right. Doctor, the Honorable Dr. Denzil Douglas. And we, the new voters, we are militant. We are standing firm that we're going to keep labor, baby, right here in St. Kitts. No unity, no PAM, no opposition. Dr. Douglas does not need an introduction. Not anywhere in the world, in the Caribbean, nowhere. Not in St. Kitts and definitely not in constituency number six. He stands as an icon of political leadership globally. He has amazed the IMF, the World Bank, and the Caribbean Development Bank. The SIDF was his doing. It has touched the lives of everyone in this country and every institution whether in the private sector or the public sector, and nobody could say that not true. This man is a listener who values the advice from everyone, regardless of their level of education. He is a spiritual man. He very wise. He is an astute politician, and we all know he can entertain on a platform. He has vision way past his lifetime, and we will be the ones to benefit. I can't wait to hear from him. I've been keeping my ear to the ground, and I can't, and I can't hear the rumbling of a five-year vision. And guess what? I hear money coming. <laughs> Comrades, I present to you, we the people of Constituency 6 present to you, a man born right here in this village of St. Paul's. A man who is loved everywhere. Haters and all love him. He is admired by a lot of people. He is our leader. He is my leader, your leader. He is all our leader. I present to you the right honorable Dr. Denzel Llewellyn Douglas. Good night, comrades. You ready? The comrades really ready? You ready and ready? I want to thank young Joseph Dorset of Newton Ground, speaking powerfully and strong on behalf of the young people, not only of constituency number six, 
but the young people of St. Kitts and Nevis on a whole. Give our young people three cheers. Have it! Have it! Have it! And that is why they cannot stop labor. Labor, as Gilbert said a while ago, is in your very heart. It's in your bones. It's in your veins and your arteries. It's in your brain. Labor is all over you. And it goes from the elderly to the very youth as well. That's why they cannot stop labor. Labor is here forever. And as long as Constituency 6 is here, labor will always be alive and always make them understand that. Comrades, tonight, we are here in constituency number six. And when labor comes to number six, in this kind of mood, it tells you that labor is about to rumble. The campaign has been long. Some of you might have gotten somewhat tired. Two years, we had some hogs who tried to bring the labor government to an end. By the grace of God, we're still here, though. Look, we're here, though. Look, we're here. And we are making them weird. We are making them wait. We are making them wait. And we here. Comrades, this is because the people of this country and the supporters of labor have stood well behind this great party. The prayers of our people went up to Almighty God above. He answered our prayers, and we are here today, two years after those vagabonds and hypocrites and traitors tried to bring your government down. I want to give it to Pam with a forwardness. Dirty people they be. Wicked people they be. After they don't suck off labor breasts for 18 years. With the forwardness. Suck off labor breasts, eat off all the labor food. And they want to give this party to Pam with the forwardness. Tell them Douglas still here. Tell them Douglas is here. There's only one Douglas, that's me. I from St. Paul's. Tell them that. And so I say to you tonight, we are here. I want to thank the people of this constituency from Harris's, Sadler's, Parsons, Lavington Parsons, Dear Bay, Parkson, and St. Paul's and Newton Ground. Because of you, this constituency has remained strong. The movement has remained strong. Remember, there were two of us, always two, six and number three. And Pam Conda, with the forwardness, want to give number three to Pam. Out of and out of place. And with the forwardness, calling young Cedric an idiot. Who more idiot than he? Come I want to say to you that they can beat us. They can beat us. They can even find nobody down here to run against me. And you know what? Since nobody run against me down here, are you spread out? Spread out, spread out, spread out. Only one.
one man must leave. One man must leave. Make sure I get it and I win. Are you spread out? Spread out. Spread out. Spread out. Comrades, a friend of mine the other day tell me that June is square Hodge, who won against me the last time, buddy. Friend of mine from Bastia tell me he had a little talk with Jack Spanner, yes, June Hodge. Apparently he have a whole heap, a yellow strip in the yard, still a stack up. So why are you doing them here? What are you doing them here, boy? He said, well, what do you mean? If the people then want me, I run again. And if Pam pay me, I got to run again too. Them are jokers. Jokers to be here. Want to run government and they don't know how to do it. Labor is going to have another five years. You understand? Labor will have another five years. And another one after that. And another one after that. And another one after that. And 20 more years we'll look for. Show me your voting finger. Raise up your voting finger. Comrades, that is why we are here. In this series of meetings, the pre-budget meetings, to explain to you how labor has not only tackled the present problems, but how in this new budget we shall set the tone, the pace, we shall outline the way for not only next year, 2015, but for the next five years as well. And so tonight, my dear comrades, I want you to understand that we shall continue to ensure that labor progresses this country. The progress will continue in the new budget and will set the tone for the next five years. Labor will continue to have fundamental changes as we have done in the past. We shall continue the trend of change. Because you see, when the challenges arise, you must be able to adopt and change. And that is what we've done. And labor has the ability and the experience to do it into the future. Comrades, that is why we are saying. And I want the children in mean school to say it every day. Real progress, real change. Let us say together tonight. Real progress, real change. Real progress, real change. Real progress, real change. That is what labor will continue to do. And I say to you that we have been able to respond to the challenges that we have faced as a nation. Three years ago, our national debt was 200% of GDP. Those vagabonds going around and saying that it is the highest national debt in the world. I remember what I told you all last election. You know, I told you all, you know, that national debt was not going to be an issue in the next election. Today, the Central Bank of the Eastern Caribbean has declared 
that St. Kitts and Nevis is the only country in the Eastern Caribbean that has set its debt on a path to achieve 60% of GDP by 2020. Not one of them can touch us. And so the same national debt that them are talk about, a talk about, a talk about, a talk about. What I'm doing, it gone poof. Poof, it gone. Poof, it gone. Number one in tackling debt, not only in St. Kitts and Nevis, but around the world. The Commonwealth of Nations has taken me around the world to speak to other nations as to how to tackle their national debt. And you know why that is happening? Because we know what we're doing. And when a man good, he just good. That is why I told you all about five years ago about national debt. Oh, you remember what I said? Eh? I have children in the audience, so I mean I say it tonight. Children in the audience to tell me, so I mean I say it tonight. But you remember what I say, you know? National debt, what? Uh-huh. Yes, uh-huh. Yeah. National debt is sitting on a donkey. Fella, got a lot of sense there. National debt was sitting on an ass. That is why he said. And the ass straight off. Say God. Comrades, we are now number one in so many different ways. And when you have these jokers last week because of the Canadian visa matter come calling down St. Kitts and Nevis, talking all kind of bad things about St. Kitts and Nevis, tell them shut up are you because we are number one. We are number one. We are number one. And we shall remain number one. Comrades, how can we maintain real progress and real change? We will continue to do so by tackling the issues that are confronting us today. And I want to tell you very frankly, one of the greatest challenges that we have been facing is the cost of living. I have listened to our people all over the world, the cost of living is high. Economies around the world, have, they have all collapsed. But we have been able to tackle some of those challenges ourselves. And one of the things that we have continued to do in tackling the cost of living was to try to put some more money into your own pockets. Starting from the beginning of November, after we realized that the economy had stabilized and we had a brighter future because you had supported us by tightening your belts, we increased the national wage. The minimum wage. It was already the highest in the Caribbean, and we took it up higher, 320 to 360. And I want to tell you now, if we were to have our own way, it would have been 370 and not even 360. But we listened to the private sector. 360, the highest minimum wage in the whole Caribbean, higher than Bahamas, higher than Barbados, higher than Jamaica, higher than Guyana, almost double St. Vincent and the Grenadines. You understand? Putting more money in people's pockets because of the cost of living. You understand? And for the public servants, 
We have given them a wage increase that spread over two years. You understand? And there's going to be another increase in January coming 2015. I hope the elections understand that, you know. You understand? And man and man, I said, Douglas, man, free up the thing now. Christmas will come. Free it up now, Douglas. You know, Christmas will come. Free it up. And then they tell me, boy, Douglas, double out of style, you know. Double out of style. And they said, triple in a style. But then today, you know, I had a call from Digicel. That my friend Johnny visited me yesterday. So, Mr. Prime Minister, a few years ago, Digicel had a triple trouble. And we get jammed up so badly in the telecom system that we never tried it again. So, they tell me, Douglas, take it easy. Take it easy. Don't go too much one time. So I have to listen to them. But I am going to make sure that Christmas come, you can have much more money in your pocket to buy whatever you want. And so I say to you, keep your ears to the ground. Keep your ears to the ground for budget day. That's when I'm going to say what it is. Comrades, those of you who are accustomed to have heavy arrears in electricity, from the days of the electricity department, we wipe it off. That God. But people are saying, Prime Minister, what about some of us who maybe had to borrow money to wipe off dark areas? What are you going to do with us? We still a think about it. Eh? We ain't forget it yet. Still a think about it. But the double could wipe it off, or the triple can over wipe it off. Comrades, what about those of you who will have food packages coming from overseas? We have already announced that up to 400 pounds of food items in barrels and so forth, the size of a jumbo barrel, not duty. No fat panda. No duty, no fat panda. And we are saying that those who are returning with food items when they're traveling back from their shopping spree, they're returning. We are going to give them an exemption of up to US $200 in terms of duty on what they carry. $540 you're going to get rebate. Or upfront free. Because we want to make sure that you have money in your pockets. Not just now this Christmas, but from here onwards. We also have already decreed that on the 12th day of December and again on the 19th day of December, the VAT of 17% will be reduced to only 5% on everything that you want to buy. You want to buy a house, this buy it. This, gover this government good. good. Hey, this government nice. Nice.
nice. Good government. The government good, the government nice. If you want to build a house, instead of 17% on building materials, only 5% go and buy your house on the 12th and the 17th. If you wanted a new vehicle, this is the time to do it. No VAT. Up to 12% of the VAT is removed. And you will have ample money in your pocket to buy gas for the whole year next year. Because, you see, Labor wants to make sure that there's money in your pocket. But that is not all, you know. That is for Christmas, but what about going beyond Christmas? And we sat down and we said, after analyzing that we have done well over the last three years, Asking our citizens to understand the serious financial plight that we were in. And you have responded positively. We are now prepared to remove VAT and duty on a whole heap of items which we call the family shopping list. The family shopping list is now in three categories of items. And no duty, no VAT is to be paid on any of these items. The first set of items, we call in them health and hygiene products. And no VAT no duty on the other one. The woman them smell nice. Let them smell nice. No wonder, no, no matter would they say buy that today, we can't buy that day. Want the woman them to smell nice. And so you have enough money to buy your deodorant. Deodorant! Of course they have gone glad. Deodorant! Bleach! Disinfectant! Adult pampers! Sanitary napkins! Bathroom tissue! Shampoo! Mouthwash! One the mouth smells sweet as well. Mouthwash, body lotion, deodorant, toothpaste, soap, and insecticides. No longer must we have any chicken gunya from mosquito bite you. Buy the insecticide. And you don't have to pay no duty and no vat for that. Somebody just said the mouthwash for the hog. I mean, I said that. And then I want you to know that all medicines, all medicines, those which are prescribed and those which are not prescribed, no VAT, no duty whatsoever on them. No VAT, no duty, not only on medicines, but also on certain equipment that are used in the medical field. For example, glucometers to test your blood test for sugar. Those also who may have nebulizers for the asthmatics who occasionally have an attack. All those will now come without any VAT and duty. And so now nobody tell you no nonsense anymore from today. Then we also have the balanced diet items. 
And I believe with the removal of the vat from food and the duty at that, I want to warn you, don't eat too much and get too fat. It's not nice. But you must eat healthily. And so all these items no longer have duty and vat on them. Peas, beans, other legumes, coconut oil, corn oil, canola oil, sunflower oil, olive oil, turkey, turkey, pork, I love pork, oxtail, sausages, mutton, lamb, beef, cereals, powdered drinks, fresh or frozen chicken, fresh chilled or frozen hams, wow, 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 hams, shoulders and cuts with bone, my God, pig tails, ears, pig snout, canned salmon, mackerel, herring, sardines, saltfish, cheese, vegetable oils, margarine, shortening, lard, canned sausages, canned corn beef, sardinilla, and bristling, whatever bristling is. Oh, sprats and tomato ketchup, tuna, pasta, skipjack, whatever that is, and bonito. All those, duty and that gone, poof. This government good. good. Hey, this government nice. Good government. This government good. good. Hey, this government nice. Good government. That is why I say they can't beat us. Because when things were rough, we told you things were rough. Things have got better and it must be better for you. We shall continue to progress this country and bring about the meaningful change that we need. Real progress, real change is what we want here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Show me your voting finger, raise up your voting finger. Show me your voting finger, raise up the voting. All right. Comrades, I say to you that this is a good government. I understand what hardship is. And I will never allow my people to undergo hardship when the government can afford it. It's nearly $20 million I am putting back into your pockets. $20 million just in food items alone that we are putting back into your pockets. $20 million is what we are giving back to you by removing the VAT and duty on these items I have identified. And then the final group of items are the children and education items. Child care, sorry, and education items. And so on fruits and vegetables, infant juices, baby diapers, and exercise books, all of them there, zero VAT, zero duty. My dear comrades, labor knows what it is doing. Labor is respected around the world as a government that knows exactly how to govern a country in difficult times. We had a few jokers among us who are under pressure and bribery that they have taken from Pam try to bring your government down two years ago because they did not want us to reach to this point where we can begin to help the people in the way that we believe it was necessary. Love money. Take bribe from Pam in order to bring down the Labour government. And he himself said it in some poor documents that he has played, that he has lodged. You know what Timothy Harris said? That while he was sitting in the cabinet, 
in November and December of 2012. He conspired with Mark Brantley and Pam in his own statement he lodged in the court. Look at it. He said while he was sitting as a member of the cabinet, in his own words, he conspired with Mark Brantley and with the opposition, Pam, in order to bring the Labour government down. Wicked vampire vagabond. Traitor hog. You understand? While sitting among us, eating from our own table. He go out there and conspired with Mark Brantley and Pam in his own words to bring Labour government down. And then down there in Anguilla chatting stupidness. He should not even allow to come back to St. Kitts. Comrades, labor will continue to do what it has to do. And another important challenge that we know that we were facing was employment. That is why we created the People's Employment Program. 3,000 people have passed through that program. One billion dollars given to them as minimum wage every single week to make sure that we keep them out of trouble. And then they go out there talking about the citizenship program. But what do you think the citizenship program is producing? Eh? A money it's producing. It's money the young people them want. Teaching them a skill and a trade and paying them while they're doing it. A lot of them believe they could waste time and get paid, you know. But tell them that dog does not fool around with them, you know. You have to work. You have to work and learn. Come man and man, I work hard for eight hours and I get the same 360. So you all have to work. Don't abuse the system. It's wrong. And that is why I said to you, we must not waste what we have. We must not waste what we have. And so if we are providing you with 360 per week to learn a skill and do some things that will give you some experience, then of course you have to work for it. And so, labor has been able to grow the economy. The growth rate in St. Kitts and Nevis is higher than any growth rate in the whole Caribbean region. That is why today we can boast of how well our citizenship program is doing. Apart from the projects which I have enumerated time and time again that brings in, that bring in the foreign direct investment the cabinet has already approved another 60 plus development projects that will generate employment opportunities for a long, long, long time to come. We have fixed the economy. We have done so. And so employment must not be a problem for us in the future. That is why we talk about the changes to come and the progress to come in the future. We have laid the foundation. 60 plus new projects are waiting there to be unfolded. Each one generating hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars of jobs for our young people and other artisans here in our country. Kittishan Hill is only one of them. Hillings estate, hotel, and residence is another one. 
You understand? Park Hyatt Hotel in the Southeast Peninsula is another one. Imperial Bay Resort is another one. The Koi Hotel Resort and Development is another one. We have put in train 60 plus projects in Nevis and in St. Kitts that will hold us well for the next seven to 10 years. So that employment in the future should not be a problem. God, this is talking about the future, you know. This is not talking about now, you know. We don't pass now, you know. It's the future we're going into, you know. It's the future I'm talking about, you know. I am talking about real jobs in the future which will progress us in a real way and bring about meaningful change in a real way here in St. Kitts and Nevis. That is why I say to you that we have to defend our SIDF and our citizenship by investment program. They want to kill it. You hear them say already that Sylvine say all they want is to put their hands on the SIDF money. Comrades, our, fi our future looks brighter. And as our future looks brighter, the Labour Party feels much more convinced and confident that what it is doing is right. Right on behalf of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And nothing will stop us from doing that which is right. Another important issue is crime. Crime. I know that in this constituency, you all know that we believe crime is a problem. Crime should not be a problem. This nonsense with people violently going after each other to settle their differences must come to an end. Young man, are you behaving by yourself? And young ladies, behave yourself so that the men them don't get jealous and fight over you. We want no confusion in this constituency in the country. The police have been working hard. The police high command has been working hard. They have had the support of the international and regional community in dealing with the issues of crime, not only here, but in all of our constituencies around the country. We do not want any crime here in this constituency. We don't want it in constituency number eight, number seven, number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. We don't want any crime at all. And so tonight and in the new year, we shall outline again our strategic policy and plans to continue to tackle crime, engendering goodwill and better relationship among the men and women who lead our crime-fighting agencies, both the police and the defense force. We want a greater understanding between the leadership of the force, greater understanding and cooperation between the leadership of the defense force as well. Because if there's fighting among yourselves, then you will have no time to deal with the criminals who are out there at bay. And so I call again for the support to be given to the police. The community must support the police. Police must continue to do their work in a professional way.
so that they can protect and serve the interest of the security of our country. We've had problems of patrol. We now have mobile vehicles. Motorcycles galore. Cars galore. We expect that the men and women who are in the force will be more motivated to carry out their responsibilities. Do you know how much it hurt me? Just outside there in White Gate, a young man driving a bus was gunned down and killed. That should not happen. That should not happen at all. These continuing attacks on busmen is wrong. And it must be stopped. It must be stopped, my dear people, and it can be stopped with your cooperation with the police to make sure that if there's information that you have, you cooperate and lend the information to the authorities at hand. Comrades, crime in the future has to be tackled. But housing our people as well will have to be tackled. Habitat. Habitat, what it was. Habitat 30 has almost come to an end. We are now ensuring that we have 1,000 houses rolled out in this new housing program. Already launched in every constituency. Four six has been launched in Sadlers. And houses are now being built in Sadlers, in St. Paul's, in Newton Ground, soon to be in Newton Ground. But right now, in St. Paul's and Sadlers, we have started, and in Parcels as well. So I said to you, this is an issue that we must tackle into the future. And we have the capacity so to do. I sat with the SIDF chief executive only on Monday afternoon and realized that $50 million have been earmarked to ensure that the 1,000 houses and more are built. Put your hands together again for the SIDF. And so houses will be built in every constituency as we roll out Habitat 30 to celebrate our 30th anniversary of independence. Comrades, I want to end by saying that we will continue to address the challenges of our young people. Crime is only one of them. Skills acquisition is only one of them. But what about academic achievement? Today, your Minister of Education may not have been here with us tonight because he has joined with the Chamber of Industry and Commerce to showcase all of our successful young people that have come through from the examinations. We continue to be number one in mathematics in the whole Caribbean, number one in English language in the whole Caribbean. And we have taken a few million dollars from the SIDF and we created something called REACH. REACH, which is compensating our young people who pass mathematics and English and science subjects, and we are paying them to go on to do the advanced levels at the CFBC and not coming off from all level and going to work. We are wealth in the Caribbean. Is that happening? Paying people to go on to college instead of going to work. No, we are wells. Reach is what is doing that. And that is why I say to you, that is what I said to you. All that we have achieved in the past, 
is past. It's the future that we have set our eyes on. The future for our young people must be brighter to tomorrow than it is today. If we do not do that, then we would have failed. Comrades, your government is a government of the future. Your government is a government of progress, a government of change, a government of fundamental, permanent, and real change to advance our people into a brighter future. And so I invite all of you to come out on Tuesday, the ninth day of December, come to the parliament building and participate in the presentation of the budget for 2015, 2015. It is a budget, yes, for 2015, but it is a budget for the next five years as well. Comrades, the signal is now. The signal is now. I summon you tonight as I always do before the battle rages. I summon you here in constituency number six to become mobilized. Mobilized for the next election. And every man, woman, and child must be out there in the alleyways and the byways. You must be in your churches. You must be at the place of work. On your buses. You must talk first, talk hard, talk long, and then talk again. Labor, summon you tonight. Summon you into action. Constituency number six, you must lead the charge as you've led the charge in the past. Constituency six alone can form a government. It means, therefore, that you have to help my men and women. I want help in number seven. I want help in number five. I want help in number four. I want help in number seven. I want help in number two, in number one, in number three. I want help in all of the constituencies. And then we would be able, then we would be able to ensure that after victory we would have been secured. Victory is going to be secured in number six before the election is called. And that is why I said, spread out. Spread out. Spread out. Leave one man here to vote. One man to vote. Spread out. And let us get on with the job. We must be able to support the refrain that is coming from Freedom FM. When we will hear every morning the strains of free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. God bless you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Comrades, follow us on Sunday night to Central Mass here the capital. Sunday night, follow us to Central. Thank you for coming out. Get home safely. Thank you.